Hi everyone, Helena here, Kelly here hey with guys. your oh, Speaker Insight Facebook Live where we help speakers, authors and coaches to build a business on your terms. And it really is a bit of a treat this week. So before I actually fully go into that and the fact that we've got the wonderful Casper Craven here, um, we always start with what's the buzz in your business. And so for those of you who are joining us, even if you're joining us on the replay, then make sure you put in the comments, what's the buzz in your business? What's happening? What are you talking about? What's making you interesting at the moment? And I have to say, I am absolutely celebrating, completely and utterly celebrating the wonderful Kelly Tyler, who actually managed to speak on stage. <laughs> it's not like I didn't used to do it all the I time, know. but... Yeah, so as, as we've only done Speaker Insight for the last nine months, and I just realized that actually I haven't actually done any keynotes on stage underneath this brand. Yeah. So I know we had quite a lot of uh, new members join over the weekend from the Women in Business event that Des O'Connor was running. So yes, if you're not in the Connection Hub, Helene is actually going to put the, the link into the comments now so you can yeah. join the Connection Hub, which is our amazing hub for speakers, authors and coaches, where we connect you with speaker agents, publishers, help you build a business on your terms. Yeah. And we have lovely people like our guest today, Casper, mm -hmm. who is actually in the hub. Casper, yeah. give us a wave and say hello because we've got a split screen going on at the moment. So I haven't even- We have. Yeah. yeah. Hello, good good, uh, good afternoon. I was gonna say good morning then. Oh, good <laughs> everybody. Well, good evening if you're watching this later on. So uh, great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. No, it's lovely to have you. And, and, and so, so the buzz in our business is that we're getting out there on stages. Yeah. Uh, the other buzz in our business that we were just talking to Casper about, yeah. actually, is if you're in the hub and you saw the video from Steve about our new uh, expert indicator, indicator. test, yeah. which is our, our diagnostic test for speakers, authors and coaches, loads of people have been taking it. And then loads of people are saying to Steve, our web developer, can you create one for one? us, right? And he's been inundated with people saying, create a test for me. And now I think just yeah. speaking to Casper, he wants one too. Yeah. And, and, and the thing about it is, is, is that it is really good if you are a speaker, author, or a coach. Yeah. It's a great way to help people understand for your avatar. Of course, we have to squeeze avatar into we it do. all. Um, it's a great way for your avatar to actually self-identify why they might need you. And that's magic. Yeah. So, so Casper, tell us what the buzz in your business is at the moment, because I know you've got so much going on. Yeah, no, we've got a bit going on, definitely. But before I do that, I just want to say, well done for getting on stage. And if anyone's listening to this right now, they I think they should like hit the hearts oh. to say, because <laughs> I've seen I've seen you speak, and um, I think you should do definitely do more of that. I think you're in your zone when you're doing that. Oh, but, thank uh, you. I totally agree. <laughs> Good. And people obviously loved you. So it's it's really good. Let's move on now. Casper, tell yeah. us about you. <laughs> yeah. So the buzz in my business. So gosh, we've got loads of things going on. We've got um, we've got some quite a big uh, media coverage um, coming up. Um, I did um, a TV show in the States in um, August with a, a gentleman called Tom Billiou, who runs something called Impact Theory, he founded a billion dollar brand called Quest Nutrition. And um, so I was interviewed by him and I think it's going live tomorrow. Um, and I did an interview with Forbes magazine that's coming out soon and uh, we're just in the middle of launching a new product and uh, so yes yeah, there's, there's loads of things going on. So that's <laughs> awesome. Awesome. This is what buzz in your business sounds like people nice one Casper. <laughs> so, so I know in our in our membership program uh, Change Make Essential I know we interviewed you a while ago and some of our, our members have been watching your interview in there and actually loving hearing the journey of you as a speaker, author, adventure, so they can learn those insight tips. But that's not what we're focusing on today. So yep. today we're focusing on your sort of framework, your IP, which is all about how you can run a business that doesn't run you into the ground, one that runs without you. Yes. Um, so I think it's really, um, if, if you want to check out the interview with Casper, Helena will put the change maker yeah. details in there because we give everyone a free month to come and check out the resources. Yeah. So you can see Casper's deep dive interview in there. But for people that haven't heard about you, Casper, can you just tell them a little bit about who you are mm -hmm. and how you've discovered this sort of freedom way of working, how, how it came about? Okay, so back in um, 2009, where the, where the story starts, um, my uh, wife and I, we spent uh, probably about six months coming up with a different way that we wanted to live our lives. 
And we created a story and narrative of the future. And part of that involved sailing around the world with our, with our young kids. Yeah. And when we had the idea, um, we didn't have the money, not even remote. Well, there, there, there were loads of reasons why we shouldn't have done it. The money was just one of the many reasons. <laughs> why not? And back then I was, um, I was running a small consultancy business. We had sales of about 400,000 pounds, losing money, and I'd have earned more snacking shelves and Tesco's. And we, we came up with this idea and said, okay, in five years time, so it was 2014, we said, we're gonna go sail around the world with our kids and we're gonna have created so much money to go and make that happen. Long story short, we created the money, we, we sailed around the world, but the piece that I really want to talk about is that creating the money piece. Because right. in that process, um, we asked ourselves, I think what has been the best question I've ever asked myself, which is how do we create a business that can run without us? Mm -hmm. Because we knew that we were going to be in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean. And if that business could not run without us, then it would have gone bust yeah. and yeah. it wouldn't work. And when I spoke to people back then, everyone said, you are crazy. Your business will go bust. There's no way you can make it work. Mm. We went through um, a process of um, almost breaking the business several times. And I made lots and lots of mistakes at one point. Uh, my team threatened to leave and the business was literally going to disappear. And through that process, I figured out the way that we could get the business to run without us. That first business, we ended up selling that for seven figures whilst we sailed across the Pacific. <laughs> but we also created two other businesses that followed exactly the same principle yeah. that they could run without us. In a different and I was industry, like, right, yeah. Casper? Second. In a different industry. Different Completely types. different industries. Yeah. yeah. So one was in um, the, the core business was in um, data analytics. We were a consultancy business working with blue chip clients. One was an online marketing business, and one was a property business. So and that's what I love. That what yeah. you're teaching is transferable. Yeah, it's a blueprint, and it means that it doesn't matter what you do, you can actually apply it. Yeah, which is amazing. Absolutely, because you know, everyone has this tendency to say, well, my business isn't like that and this doesn't apply to me. Yeah. But I believe these principles are universal. And it's, it's a bit like the, um, that thing with Roger Bannister when he ran the four minute mile. Every, everyone said it wasn't possible. And the following year, like 30 people broke the four minute mile and then 500 people in the following year. So it's a changing of belief set of saying you can create a business that can run without you, but it just needs to go through a specific process and a specific set of steps to get yeah. there. Perfect, nice entirely. So, so having this kind of business, what does mm -hmm. that make possible for you and your family? So, well, it's funny because we started from the end point of saying, what do we want for our family? And the, the first point was to go and sail around the world for two years, create magical life-changing experiences for us and our kids. Mm -hmm. So literally we did that for two years. We actually sailed one and a half times around the world. And you know, I promise you, we weren't tied to laptops or anything like that. Because I remember, I remember back in 2000, everyone said, about, you know, create a business that sort of makes money while you sleep. Mm -hmm. And everyone sort of went and sat by the beach and had a laptop. And it's like, that's not a business that can run without you. That's just doing business, but sitting in a very, very different place. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's still a job, but just a job was sort of got by a beach, right? Yeah. So, that, for, that two, for those two years, that's what that enabled us to do, is to literally go and spend time with our kids, experience the world with them. Um, and it's interesting now because we're now building the next business, which is all around our mission of inspiring millions of people around the world to grab hold of life, but family first, and then reverse engineer the business that really works for you. Okay. And Within doing that, we are building in all these different things that we want to do together as a family. So we've just come back from a six week expedition, sailing down the West Coast of America, um, and you know, just building a very, very different lifestyle, deliberately, specifically, intentionally, because we have such clarity on what we want. Therefore, it's much easier to go and make it happen. Yeah. Nice, beautiful. And so I know that um, a lot of people will probably be thinking about this because obviously the people that we talk to in Speaker Insight and the Connection Hub are speakers, authors and coaches. Yeah. 
And one yes. of the things that we teach them is actually your business is central around your story, your message, your IP. It's you right mm -hmm. at the center. So can you tell me a little bit, the people that are thinking, well, how do I run a business that runs without me when I am the business? The business? <laughs> can you define what it actually means? And cool, can you also sort of give me an example of what it actually takes to set that type of business up? Yeah, definitely. So let me start with, with a parallel. So, you know, one of the probably the most famous speakers out there, Tony Robbins, you know, he has built an extraordinary business, but that business is built around his name mm -hmm. and it's completely dependent on him. Mm -hmm. He can't step out of that business because the business is him. And, you know, I know they do live events, but they're not the same without him. They Contrast all that. Tony. Say again, sorry? They all want Tony, even though he's got trainers. They're Absolutely. Like, yeah, 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 you could do the last day of, yeah. of, of Unle Unleash the Power, but, but we want Tony. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Contrast that with Simon Sinek. Mm -hmm. His whole movement is about start with why. And yeah. he's created all the IP, all the frameworks, and the different models, and other people are delivering all of those. And it's much more like a, the brand is not Simon. The brand is start with why. So that is something that can scale up. So that's, you know, the mission that I'm on now with what we're doing. So our mission is called The Brave You. And so I don't want it to be tied to us and our story. And so that's why we're working with small groups of people now to create other people who've created these sorts of businesses and accelerate them rapidly. So they become the stars of the story and we slowly stick into the background and it's got nothing to do with us and our story. It's all about everybody else so that's the central thesis is creating a set of ip and a set of frameworks that can scale without you and if you want to go and do speaking events because i love doing events um then you can do that but it's exactly on your terms mm -hmm. and you create so much demand that the demand exceeds the supply so therefore you can push your prices up and you can charge higher prices for it which is kind of the space that i'm at now so when i was doing the sony expedition i went and actually sailed to a speaking gig in california turned up there and it's like it's quite cool to ride by boat and <laughs> uh, and it's just a fun way to do it right so literally it's living life on your terms rather than having to do this but you yeah. only get there i say specifically deliberately intentionally for, to create that sort of business it doesn't happen by accident <laughs> It sounds really similar to um, one of the things because we yeah. love teaching frameworks, right, yeah. and IP. Because I think that's what is one of the USP for speakers. Is if you've got a framework and some intellectual property, you're already heads and shoulders above other speakers and Absolutely. coaches. But if you look at yes. what Stephen Covey did, for example, with his Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, obviously it's a best-selling book. He's got it in there. He's got licensed programs that trainers can actually learn his methodology and be a, a licensed coach to go out there into corporates and teach it. Yeah. There's online programs. So all of these things are assets that are using the IP, either digitally that's being produced mm -hmm. and out there, or people are training under your banner and out there, yeah. or you're profiling people as in you're doing in The Brave You, where your brand is being uh, broadcasted mm -hmm. and you're earning money, but actually you're not swapping time for money. So you don't have to be there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, one, of the, one of the principles we always talk about um, is turning an ordinary business into an extraordinary business. Mm -hmm. And there's six different ways to do that. So one of the ways is changing who you sell to. So I remember back in my last business, we used to sell to marketing managers and the price point was 300 quid. And, you know, we just got battered on price because other people were suddenly popping up doing the same sorts of things that we were. Yeah. We changed who we sold to. We're now selling to CMOs and a project is now 50 grand. And it's fundamentally shifting. With my speaking business, rather than speaking to anybody and everybody, one of the niches that, that's appearing is speaking to high growth private equity backed tech companies. Mm. And it's coming out of really specific niches. So it's all about that, 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 the, the thing that you guys teach, which is getting that real clarity on your avatar and finding better people to sell to, and becoming very big in their worlds and making sure the demand exceeds the supply. So that's one of the things, changing who you sell to. The other thing is changing what you sell, uh, one of the other things, which is exactly what you were saying about the IP and frameworks. So you're not selling you being on a stage, you're selling this package of yeah how you can go and do things which other people can deliver as well so yeah and th th that's actually just uh, Matt Langdon was just saying he's a a big fan of yours but one of the best bits of uh, advice that you ever gave him was to tell people 
what you want and need because no one can help you if they don't know how. Um, and you can't help yourself, right? If you no. haven't got that goalpost of actually what does it look like when you are successful or when you're living life on your terms, how do you know how to get there and when you start their goals and then kind of come on. Absolutely. And the, the, the other point about that, I say hi to Matt, by the way, it's good, it's good that he's here. He, he runs an amazing organization, by the way, called Hero Roundtable. Just giving a quick shout out for oh, that. Isn't it? Yeah, amazing. they love you in the hub, man. Yes. Tell us all about it. Yeah, yeah. join the next um, Yeah, no, absolutely fantastic. The man, the man has a huge heart and uh, doing, doing amazing things in the world. The, um, the point there about the, the, the vision is also getting really clear on what's the shared family story. And this was a big part of our whole thing, because with me and my wife, Nicola, we got really, really clear on where we wanted to go as a family. And therefore, once Nicola understood that, then she could be much more supportive. We're going in this direction over here. She understood why my last business, working long hours since I figured out, the, the module and the formula. But so many people I know, one partner is going this way, the other partner is going this way, and it drives them apart rather than driving them together. So yeah. that story, that shared story is really fundamental. And that's, that's similar to values alignment, isn't it? Because I know when, when people understand what their core values is in an individual, not so much as a company, then you can align the reason why you're doing the business yeah. to your values. And that's where you might not yeah. have the same methodology of how you're going to get there or the same skills as you and your husband or you and your business partner mm -hmm. but because you align yeah. and you've got the as, same vision that's yeah. what makes it the difference as, as work wives you know sort of structure connection and fun are pretty much up there if any if, if we can put a structure in if it can be fun and, and if we, we get connected then then we're pretty much going to say yes <laughs> <laughs> It's, like it's exactly, I mean, the values is a huge part of what we talk about as well. And, you know, one of the things that we always notice is what it is that makes um, a family thrive and do really, really well are exactly the same things that make you thrive in business, which is caring about people, making sure everyone's okay, building on people's strengths, making sure you're all going in the same direction, making sure you subscribe to a set of behaviours. And time and again, I see the most successful companies all naturally exhibit these characteristics, the same with the most successful families where there's love, there's joy, there's harmony, all those sorts of things. But you don't naturally need to tell people to do that in family life, often. Yeah. And um, it's just innate, right? So... But I think that's it. That's in, with the fact of like when you look at successful people and now with I'm sure many of your audience are entrepreneurs and business owners. There isn't this. I mean, it's National Work Life yeah. Balance Week this it week. Is, yeah. And actually, that's one of the things as an entrepreneur. There's a real merge where there isn't a five o'clock stop and then you go home and you be the family person. Mm. It's all in one. So if you can make your job or your career or your company feel like you're at home. Yeah with the yes. work with the people that are like family, okay. invite people into your house, live on your terms, then it makes that transition so much easier. It's funny, I'm, I'm reminded of a card that I, I got sent by a friend in New York, probably, oh, I'm gonna really reveal my age, about 30 years ago. Um, and, and she sent me a little card, it was a vase with a rainbow. And it literally just said, friends are the family you choose for yourself. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think with the technology that we have and with the, with the with everything we have at our fingertips, the automation that's possible, actually friends far away and nearby, as well as the people you work alongside, because I think it becomes a situation where we work with, not for anymore. Yeah, yeah. And that really is the shift that's really beginning to happen because actually we get to choose our work family. We get to choose our friends Absolutely. in that way. But the thing is, life is so short, right? Why do you want to spend time with people that you don't spend time with, right? So, the, but the other thing that, that, that includes clients, yes, right? If you call yes. clients and you pick the phone up and go, oh, they're an energy drain, yeah, suck them, yeah, that's it. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I don't, I don't have enough life to spend with people who, you know, you, you don't get on with. The, the associated part with that, we always talk about, is this whole thing about, you know, finding your superpowers. So my, my wife shared, uh, Nicola shared a picture in our, our group yesterday of our uh, six-year-old wearing a Batman outfit. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, but the point being is that everyone's got like a superpower, one or two things, which you do so naturally, so well. By the way, when you have that, you assume that everybody else can do it because you can do it. So we all overlook our things. But a lot of it is just getting in that zone where you do that thing so brilliantly, so naturally, and then getting other people around you who are doing their thing. Gaps will appear, but then you just need to recruit people to fill those gaps. And that's how you build an amazing team of people that, you know, creates the business that runs without you. So. Perfect. So, so, so I, I love all of this and we know that we could talk to you all day. And I know <laughs> that there are people on the, on, on the live who are probably going, yeah, but what needs to be in place for me to run a business that runs without me? So can you talk a little bit about that for us, please? Okay. So... Let me tell you about the mistake that I made first. Yay, because this is a, it's a, there's, a, there's a really easy trap to fall into because I thought what I needed to do was to define the systems, the processes for sales, marketing, finance, technology, all these sort of things, and then bring in other people to run them for me. That's funny, I was speaking to an entrepreneur the other day um, he was signed up to one of our courses and had to cancel because he was defining all the processes. Here's the thing, right? After that, he was then going to go and find the people to run those systems and processes. I made that same mistake, found the people after I defined the systems and processes because they hadn't created them, because they hadn't known them. What's the first thing they're going to do when I'm not there? They're going to chuck them out, right? So far better thing to do is to get those people who've got the energy, the drive, I always recruit for people who've got the right attitude rather than the right skills. Skills can be taught and you get them in place. You start giving them ownership and you start giving them responsibility and you encourage them to define the systems and the processes because, you know, the natural controlling part of us, um, as partly as entrepreneurs, we want to map all this stuff out because we're told to map all this stuff out. But I think it's the other way around. You get the people and then you get them to define the systems and processes so they actually own them and live with them. Sure, be involved in steering it and shaping it. Um, but that's the way to go about it. It's people first every single time and then help get them and to help. We used to do that in one of the consultancies that I, I run. It was actually, we didn't write job descriptions. Yeah. So we knew mm. some of the things that had to be done. I mean, had a whole list of tasks. Mm -hmm. But then when the person came for the interview, we looked at them and obviously you had the psychometric testing and the values match and all that type of stuff. But actually, if we were looking at, say, a virtual assistant, that person will go, well, yeah, well, I can do all this stuff, but do you know that I can build WordPress websites and I can yeah. do zero? And we're like, oh, okay, so that stuff I was going to give to that, I'm going to move it over to you because yeah. you like it and you enjoy it. And that's actually Absolutely. where a tech VA I yeah. first came across about five years ago was the, that nature was born, that they could yeah. do social media, they could do diary management, they could do finance checking. And there was a new role, which I would have literally just been blinkered and said, no, a VA only does diary management. Yeah. So that whole building the role and the systems with people, mm. I think is a great tip. Uh, so so I mean, it, go on. I was going to say, so in terms of you know, talking about building a speaking business, mm. which is, that's the point we're starting off from now, but we're building it with the IP and the frameworks. But here's the way we've approached it. So I'm doing this with Nick and my wife, and we've been defining our roles over the past um, you know, three, four months. And we worked out, what do I do? I go on stages, I do marketing, I do selling. Who builds the systems and the processes and makes sure everything happens? That's Nicola. She's the CEO in our business. And uh, I do what she tells me. It'd be hard for some people to believe that. But that's, but that's actually what happens. And then things like tech and design, neither of us have skills in that. So that's all outsourced. Yeah. So we're just making sure we're getting in that zone where we're brilliant because so many people get it wrong and they try to do everything, mm -hmm. but it's get in your lane, get in your zone and like, you know, find the people who compliment you. Yeah. And, you know, that's meant that we can accelerate at a very fast rate now with what we're doing. So Yeah. It's the and same so, thing so from the EMIF, isn't it? It, it is. So it's like being a technician business owner from an EMIF and yeah. they attempt to do everything and then they realise why they've fallen out in love with their business. That's exactly it. So, so, so it was just because um, this particular point actually plays to Daisy's um, question almost, which is people buy from people. So how can you take your own story out of the business? So that's a, that's that's a, that's a great point. So look, for the business that I'm building now, I don't want to take myself out of it because I am loving what I am doing, yeah. and 
But what I want to do is manage my time within this. So I do it completely on my terms. The previous businesses, the three different businesses, we set it up so they would run completely without me. The speaking business, it's now I go and do the speaking gigs that I want to do and I enjoy doing. And how do I enable that? Well, the period that I'm working, I create content. So I create a series of videos. I batch them all up and I create the content which can last for a month, for two months. And so that's the thing that's going out there. Um, so that for me is the shift in terms of, you know, how you can do that, because you're right. When certainly in the early stages of building something, you need to be involved in doing that. But the thing for us now, we're starting to recruit the other evangelists, the other people in our model who can then carry it on with us. So slowly we step further and further into the background yeah. and it's, it's no longer about us, it's about the mission. So. And, and, and I think that is a massive point that, that it is actually, if you, if you go not to the, what is this business going to do for me, but what is this business going to do for the world that actually, and build from that place, that's then the place that allows you to go. We are just the facilitators of this business and the entity that it is, is going to grow and grow and grow because people will actually jump on the mission mm -hmm. rather than on the fact that we are people who are running a business. Exactly, exactly. And look, you know, just, just to be clear about this, you know, th th this is not a switch that you just suddenly press and overnight create the business that runs without you. It took us five years to figure out the formula to do this. Yeah. And you know, we believe we can accelerate people through significantly to get it a lot faster than that. But mm -hmm. there are defined things you have to go through. And, you know, just because something is simple in concept doesn't mean it's easy to do. So yeah. it is hard work to get all these things in place, but it is doable. That's the point. So it's interesting because because Matt was actually replying to Daisy and saying that I think that's true sometimes, but not always. We buy stuff from non people every day, and so I think that is about how do you set up the business and what's actually available within it and through it that you can set up. And as you say, it takes time. And I love that you're saying that, by the way, because actually these are our labors of love these are our missions our passions that we produce things around that allow people to actually grow expand and and experience the world right yeah. absolutely and it's like the, the i mean the mission piece you talked about there what i think people buy is the transformation that you can offer them you yes. can take them from here to here yeah. and if that's tied to your story fantastic but it's finding other people say, well, look, I've been on this journey from here to here. And, uh, you know, that's what people really are interested in, right? Is what does this mean in my world? How can this really benefit me? Yeah. And interestingly, it's like this is seamless with everybody else. <laughs> that thought. So here's one from Memnia that actually kind of ties in completely to that. So she's saying you started building your speaking business around your journey. What is your best tip on finding what material to use on your Brave You brand so it's not just attached to your own personal story? That's a good question. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Hi there, Memory. I know you're a sailor as well and uh, moving, moving in speaking worlds. So look, the- So watching I your mean, video in the Change Maker Central, she likes She you. likes it. Fellow sailor, <laughs> yeah. fellow author. <laughs> Gotta be done. <laughs> okay, so, the, so look, so you know, when I started out in speaking worlds, um, I start out with the sailing stories, but then it's been transitioning it to business stories because that's what people can relate to. And as we've been taking people through the Brave You journey, increasingly the stories now are about other people's transformations mm -hmm. and you know, the journeys that they're going on. And that's the place that I want to be in 12 months time where we've taken 20 people, 50 people, 100 people, and we've created the transformations. So that becomes the story and um, it's less about our sailing. And even now, you know, the sailing story is definitely taking a back seat um, because you know, one, 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 I get bored. There's only so many times I want to tell those stories, and it's the impact on the 
audiences will come from other things, other messages. So it's just different ways to, to discover. And you know, you, you try and you test and you measure and you, you see what works mm -hmm. and you try different material stages and some stuff gets more engagement, some stuff gets less engagement. So it's the, it's the iteration process. Yeah, all, and all, all businesses evolve and emerge. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's one of the things with keynotes. I hate it when speakers <laughs> come to me and they've got one keynote and they just say the same thing and they don't customize it to their audience. And I'm just like, you know, you'll just be a one trick pony and that's not what you want to do. Yeah. But yes. is it, I just want to see on Memnia's point here, how much are you bringing in your framework, yes. your IP now to your talks rather than the story of you sailing? Yeah. Because really the brave view is more built around the systems that you're teaching people on how to do this. Yeah. Is that is that shifting in your keynotes? Definitely, definitely. So um, it's funny. So I've just literally, I, you know, one of the things I always talk about is surrounding yourself with people who are playing at like the highest level possible. So I went to an event two weeks ago with my speaker agent, Maria Franzoni. I know she's also in this group as well. Yeah, so there were 15 of her top speakers there. I feel very fortunate to be in, in her sort of, you know, a, a group as it were. And what was amazing, talking to the other speakers and seeing the language they use, how they position themselves and how they go to market and also seeing the reaction from prospects and clients who were in the room. After that, I went back home and I, I had three keynotes before that. I've now got nine keynotes, <laughs> which are about different issues that people face is that thing right and listening to your market what are the challenges what are the issues that people are facing and you know every single speaker you know they've got this many stories they can choose from but they only need this many to create the impact yeah, so yeah. it's a question of what's the challenge that someone's facing and therefore what's the best collection of stories that i can put together to help someone go on that journey but then, as you said, with the brave view, it's now a set of frameworks and a set of models of saying, how can we take someone there quickly so that they can then drop that into their business, their speaking business, whatever it is, so they can get the rapid acceleration. So. And, and what you're saying is just as relevant for the authors and the coaches, because mm. actually, when you mm. have what that little problem, what that nugget is, that's a lead magnet, that's the buzz in their business, that's everything that you're talking about that allows people to go, oh, this person really gets me. Let me check out more about their methodology because actually I get where they're coming from. Now let me see what I can do with them that allows me to progress. Absolutely. I mean, in that minute, every single business in the world is the same, whether you're B2B, whether you're B2B, it's can you match the conversation that's going on inside your prospect's head? And if you can match a mirror that conversation, then you, know, you understand the pain points and the issues that someone's going through. They feel understood. And then that's the start of the conversation, right? So all about the avatar. All There's about never the been avatar. a Facebook Live that we've done that's it. that we haven't mentioned the word avatar. Uh -huh. So I know when we interviewed you for the change maker, um, Casper, one of the things that I really liked about you was actually the way you came at things from a mindset point of view. Because mm. I know you do a lot of reading and you've got a lot of mentors. What type of mindset or what qualities do you think people uh, should have if they're going to build this type of business? Yeah. The most important one. The, the most important thing is a practical thing, and it's the story that I talked about. Okay. Creating that story, the shared story of the future with whether, you know, with your family, with your partner, with your business partner, creating an exciting story of the future. And then the mindset piece is the belief piece, mm -hmm. believing that you can make it happen. And you know, the way that we did that, we had our story, we had the map of the world on the wall, we had it written out next to it in words. And every day, every morning, I come down at 5.30 in the morning and I would do this exercise, the theatre in your mind, where I would like see this thing working as a, a movie in my mind. And I ingrained it so deeply into my psyche that it just became so, so real that there was no way it was not going to happen. And you did so, vision board and stuff, didn't you, as yeah. well? In your book, you've got vision boards of what you actually mapped out. Exactly. All, all those things. I love. I mean, look at those bits <laughs> behind him, right? You can see it. <laughs> Great. I'm a very visual person. I have to have stuff around. And the reason for that, by the way, there's a really powerful psychological reason. Because, you know, when you have stuff that's piled away in pieces of paper and notebooks and things like that, then you don't see it. There's, there's a book by a guy called Daniel Kahneman called Thinking Fast and Slow, which I'm sure love, a lot of people have heard of. The line in there that I love 
is what you see is all there is. Our minds continually bombarded with messages from social, from all the different things that are going on. And unless stuff is front of mind, it disappears into the past just like that. That's why we have stuff like this on the wall and you surround and you curate your environment to positively reinforce where it is you want to go. There's, there's no accident we have a picture of the boat there. We've got more sailing adventures planned yeah. and we want to go and do other things. But curating your environment is fundamental to so that whole belief thing and just making it become part of your DNA, part of your story. Yeah, there are, there are two things that are really present for me. One is believing is seeing, which for me is, is always a good sort of thing. So believing is seeing, because a lot of people kind of, really, you know, use the phrase, I need to see it to believe it. Well, actually, what if you flipped it on its head? That's my invitation to That's everyone Napoleon listening. That's the Napoleon Hill, isn't it? What yeah. you can believe, you can conceive. That's right? exactly it. And then the second piece is whenever I run my vision board workshops, the first thing I get people to do is to take a photo, well, once they've shared it with everybody else and so there's even more feeling around it, um, is to get them to take a photo and then to actually change the backgrounds of their phones and their screen savers to the vision board. Because actually then how many times do you look at your phone? The subconscious is gonna be picking up all of that stuff that you are desiring to have right then and there every pretty much, well, probably four hours a day during the amount that we all look on our phones, right? Not for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 so true exactly what you just said i mean it's um yeah i mean literally right next to in our, in our bedroom we like the big the pictures all around there reinforcing what are the things we want to do so if you wake up in the morning what's the first thing you see it's yeah. just imprinting it it just goes in and you know all, all around the walls and the sort of the stairs and things like that where the kids are going to go so you know we created our family values with our kids same as that we did in the business and they're continuing that reinforcement. So it applies to family as well as business, all the same techniques. Lovely. Yeah, agreed. So Matt's just saying, and I completely agree with him because I've listened to you twice in the car, I, I'm <laughs> pleased to say, book, yeah. or not on the audio version of it. So Matt's just actually said the first half of Casper's book is priceless for planning and mindset. He's very good at presenting the important parts of his story. And I, and I completely agree. We'll, we'll, put, a a link, yeah, we'll put a link to your book in yeah. the comments when we come off. I also want to touch on like how people can connect with you, right? Yeah. Because I know you're in the hub, so we you know that people can tag you and we'll put um, some links to your website and stuff up there. Um, but I know at the moment you've got another bit of buzz going on in your business as well, haven't we you? Do. <laughs> <laughs> we have. So super excited. So part of the, um, there were two parts to the journey of, of creating the business that could run without us. One was learning the principles of creating an extraordinary business mm -hmm. where demand e e exceeds supply and people have a distinct preference for you if they can afford you. And I went through a um, huge amount of intensive training in the States to really learn how to create that business. The other piece, of, so that was one piece of the training. The other piece was the teamwork and the leadership piece um, and where I almost lost the business and everybody threatened to leave. And that's when I had to learn how to create the culture and, and so on. And what uh, Nicola and I have done, we've created um, um, a program, it's called Autonomy. And we just literally launched um, our open membership um, for that. Uh, for the first time yesterday. And basically we're taking people through on a 12 week program to accelerate people um, who are um, up for this, who are action takers to say, how can we get you as fast as possible to a business that can run without you? And every week, 12 weeks, we're doing a webinar with some specific actions that people can go and um, take to really transition that business and you know this was the thing that i would have loved back in the day um yeah. to be able to do this this was the stuff where you know i i had the pain of trying to figure this all, all this stuff out um on my own so we just literally um opened up um sign ups for this we're only taking 20 people on this program oh, okay. because wow. it's because and then the reason for that um is that we want to work with a very small number of people who we can turn into those superstars, the success stories that we talk about mm -hmm. so that we don't talk about ourselves anymore. We say we've taken this person here, we've transformed them, and we're already working with some amazing um, people from the workshops we've done earlier this year. Yeah. So, yeah, we just launched that program yesterday. And- um, Comments to it so people can check out 
the actual program itself, the autonomy course, yeah. yeah. And the other thing that's worth saying, and we're doing a webinar on this tomorrow night as well. Okay. Um, and I should also say that for the first, those first 20 people who sign up, or well, there are only 20 places we're offering on this, we're also including a ticket to a three-day event that we're going to be running in February um, in London, where we're going to be doing deep dive into all these things. Oh, so um, you know, we are making it as affordable as possible so that we can really get those people accelerating. So yeah, and, and just for the people that are interested, because I know um, you know the whole vision of you actually helping them build a business that runs. You know, what what's possible? What sort of time scale? Mm -hmm could people work on and get that sense of freedom? Yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that's a slightly hard question to ask, answer because it depends where, pe where people are in their journey, how much action they're going to take, how fast they're going to move. But just to give an example, so one of the, uh, the companies that um, came to the, one of our last workshops, um, they're a PR company and literally sitting around the, uh, the kitchen table, I'm in our kitchen now, just like next to me, they came up with this idea of making a hundred entrepreneurs famous and they're creating this whole movement around doing these things. And that's a fundamental step of turning an ordinary business into an extraordinary business, yeah. that you're selling something different. You're not selling PR services now. We're saying we're only gonna take 100 people, we're gonna make them famous by packaging everything this amazing team of people knows and just fast forwarding these people on the group. So, you know, we're already seeing the results of people doing this yeah. just by challenging and disrupting them, getting to think in different ways about creating an extraordinary business. That's great. And the fact is, is that you've got the support and I'm, I'm sure 20 people that go on this journey with you will be sharing their experiences yeah. as a collective as well, right? And creating new stories, yeah. which is, which is, you know, sort of, as you say, it then becomes a pool of stories, which then helps the methodology, the frameworks actually be the thing that takes center stage, which then enables many, many, many more. And that's where the ripple is, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly that. And okay, I come back to, you know, what's our reason why? Our mission is to inspire millions of people around the world to put family first, work out what you want to go and do, and then reverse engineer your life to go and do that because nobody ever gets to end of days and says, you know what, I wish I'd spent more time working. It's always family. So that's why we say put family first and it's counter to how we have been taught to do things as entrepreneurs. My model of the world was always, I will build a business in five years time, I'll sell it. Then I will go and do family happy, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. always then I'll be happy. And actually this just embraces all of that. Yeah. And as you say, and I think this is a shared synergy between yourselves and, and us, you know, building it on your terms is the most Absolutely. vital thing right absolutely and you know you you, you, you choose the people you, you work with and who you want to, how you want to do it literally you you sculpt and, and deliberately specifically and consciously create that yeah beautiful awesome. love it really love it i know we've gone completely over as we always yeah. do 42 <laughs> we, minutes we'll put okay. all the links in there we'll add uh, your book link as well when yes. we come off and we'll um share this in the hub so the hub members can can join if you're not in the connection hub helena's yeah. put the link in there yeah and um if do you sign up that is there a limit to people that can watch the webinar or can we just like it's not like the first no no as many so well, actually i think i think we're capped at about 200 people on the uh, on the zoom thing so um just should be good. give you a place yeah, now basically because <laughs> there, there'll be nuggets and beauty in there for, for sure yeah. Love it. So actually Thank on the webinar, so we're showing, we're showing lots more insights and stories. So actually there's loads of um, immediate things that people can do. How do you create cash fast? You know, different strategies to create an extraordinary business, how to get your family involved. So there's, and it's me and Nicola doing as well. She's, she's far more clever and intelligent than I am, so she'll be <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, you're not hiding her behind the scenes then. You're making her come out a little bit like Kelly kind of came out to everybody on, on Sunday. Yeah. Well, not originally Kelly. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's got a different connotation, Helen. Different conversation <laughs> entirely. It's good. Oh, Jen, so, we really appreciate your time. We always love chatting to you. I know that our members are always inspired by your stories and just also the way that you've run your business and how successful you've been with your own PR and your book and your speaking. Um, you're a great asset for us to have in the hub. Yeah, you really are. Many blessings. Well, Thank you very much. It's, I, I always like enjoy chatting to you guys because it's, it's fun, which is what yep. it's all about, right? That is. That's it. Business, <laughs> business definitely, and it's not often I say should.
No, but it should be fun. It just is. It just is. Business is fun. <laughs> Have a great week, everyone. Take we'll care. see you all next Tuesday. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.